Welcome to Ed Talks. Super happy to talk this time with a good friend of mine, a colleague, Luis Tavares. And Luis, where are you from originally? I am originally from the Dominican Republic. I came here when I was 12 years old. Yeah, that is so cool. Where, What state did you first set foot on when you came here? Uh, New York. We came to the South Bronx in New York City. Yeah. All right. And is that where you grew up? Essentially, I was there for uh, two, three, four years and then was really, really fortunate to have been identified and provided with a scholarship to go to high school in Connecticut. Oh, very cool. And you eventually became a Ph.D. I eventually got there. Yes, it was always a dream of mine. I kept working at it and, and got there. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. So and then, you know, the other thing I don't mean to be stereotypical. But every time I meet someone from the DR, I'm like, because that's the birthplace of bachata. So yeah, uh, we are, uh, it's the birth of bachata and we're all born dancing it. <laughs> yeah. So, so we all have that rhythm that you need to dance it because we're born listening to it and, lance, and dancing to it. I know. I wish we would have talked about that. We were in person recently. I wish we would have talked about that because maybe you could have taught me a little, a few uh, to, to better get the musicality. Because like, you know, I, I know the, I know the different moves, but I, I don't got the hip action at all. Yeah, I, I could have worked on your hip action. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So next time, next time I see you at Chime or, or at some venue, especially if my wife's with me, we'll we'll have to go dancing or something. It'll be a lot of fun. So yeah, we so we've gotten to know each other, spent even even more uh time together in the last few days. We were both at the New Jersey, Delaware Valley Hymns Conference, which is an amazing event. It's the two big chapters coming together every year for a big annual event, really well attended and, and a lot of great um, speakers and a lot of great partnership within the vendor community and, and the providers. And it was really, really, really good. You've been involved with them very long. Yeah, we've been doing that for quite a few years, the joint meeting. And I think because of the size, it allows the, the teams, the leadership team, to put together a much better program. Uh, the funding is better, right? It's bigger yeah. because of so many people participate. Uh, so I think that helps in making it such a great program. Yeah, for sure. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you specifically is you are an author as well as a doctor. Uh, you are in a CIO at Lehigh Valley. You're, you're also an author. And I really want to talk about your book. I really want to focus our time on Ed Talks related to your book, because it's such an important piece of work, you know, that I know I would have benefited from, and I still can, I think we might talk about that. So it's not just for new people in a role, but right, well, you can take the same concepts and reestablish yourself within a role. Oh, absolutely. So the, the book is, from the title, it sounds like it's for new CIOs. But when you read the content and the way that I put it together, it really is for anybody that's looking to transform their organization to focus on how do we bring value to the organization and ultimately how do we have a positive impact on patient care, the outcomes that our patient experience and their families. Yeah, I love it. So it's the 90 day CIO. And tell us a little bit about the impetus. Like how did how did you come about to write it? So I, I wanted to, just like in many other places to try to pass it forward. I've been a CIO on and off for the past 23 years, uh, and I've learned a lot, and I've learned a lot from other people. And my feeling is that what I've learned from those other people that I've been able to put into action, uh, I, can, I can pass that forward to others who are coming uh, behind me or that are working on this right now. So that, that's what drove me to do this. Oh, that's cool. And what has the early feedback been like? So it's been out, what, uh, six months or so? It's been out just about six months, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, been, uh, it's been great. A lot of people reaching out. Uh, I get surprised all the time because I don't think of it this way, but I have vendors that come to visit me and then on the way out, they quietly say, hey, can you do something for me? I say, sure, what is it? Oh, can you sign my book? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so so I, I don't get used to that because I don't think of it that way. Yeah. Uh, but it's been it's been terrific. The response has been terrific. Uh, lots of people reaching out and saying, I love the messages. I love the stories that you put in there because I did put a lot of stories there from yeah. when I was a kid and those type of things. Uh, so I, I enjoy doing it. It was a tremendous amount of work, but 
but it was it I think it was a, a great thing that I did for myself and for others. Yeah, there's no doubt because as you know, we don't we're only trained by well, sometimes we're not trained at all, right? To step up into leadership roles and we sort of fall into it, maybe because we've been in a certain role for so many years that we get that promotion. But no one in many cases intentionally trained us and gave us like ideas on how to get to the next level or what what the expectations were and so i think the book's really helpful it's like a a, a partner and a mentor i think your book is like a mentor to people who don't have one and even if they have one it's still good uh but especially if they don't have one it can help them you know sort of bridge that gap it, it is like a, a a book mentorship right yeah uh because at the end of the book Throughout the book, I give suggestions on what you should do when during that first 90 days. And then in the back of the book is a consolidated plan that you can really take and execute in that first 90 days. But again, it doesn't have to be the first 90 days. It's kind of like a 90 day plan, no matter where you are in your career or yeah. what status you are. Yeah. And yeah. And we've made that point twice because it's really critical because, yeah, a lot of times people look at the title and say, well, that's for a new person. But actually, a lot of us who have been in the same role for a long time need to become that new person again. You know, yeah, yeah. we we tend to, we do a lot in that first two years, right? I, as studies have shown, like it takes about two years to get, like, get really ingrained and understand the organization that we kind of hit this uh, like three years of like really good productivity. But at the five year mark, we start to fall off. And unless you're intentional. And so that 90 day CIO, you can take it at any time so you've been in your role a while, it doesn't matter. You can still look to like, use it as a little fire underneath you to like, get back to that, you know, really growth stage and really help your company a lot more. Yeah. It's, it's 90 days, not the first 90 days. Yes. Right? So yeah. apply wherever you are in that 90 day period. And and the other thing is to, it's, it's 90 days, but if you take more time to implement the things that I'm suggesting in the book, that's fine too, because not every organization is the same. Not every person is the same. So the the pace at which you implement the suggestions and put that plan into action really depends on you and the organization. But it's critical that you do it at some point, but don't get stuck in the 90 days either. So it's not the first and it's not also not necessarily 90. Just get it done. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great counsel. Let me ask you what the what is the single biggest takeaway a reader should have from the book? So I, there's tons of practical things in it, but but if you had to narrow it down to one, what's that takeaway? So I think that when you think of the role of the CIO today with how fast things are changing, how fast our, our role is evolving, right? we really need to think of ourselves as a senior leader within our organization that happens to focus on IT. But you really have to have that strong leadership quality and that presence as a leader at the top of the chain and sitting at that table at the top. So you need to make sure that that's the role that you play and you, and you look at it from that perspective. What am I doing as a leader of this organization to really have an impact on value and on patient care? Right? So that's the takeaway. Don't think yourself as just a CTO, right? Not that a CTO job is wrong because we all have CTOs, but you're the CIO. You have to think much more strategically than, than, than the other folks who are running the part of the organization that you run. Uh, you need to be constantly intact with the leadership team, with the members of the medical staff, with all the different leaders across the organization, because you're going to drive, you're going to facilitate and drive what they end up doing. Yeah. 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 That's great. And you are one of the speakers at the event that we were talking about with uh, New Jersey and Delaware Valley hymns. And you, you made that point eloquently you know that we are leaders first and we happen to know technology and so we can bridge bridge that gap uh when it comes to working with our peers yeah, it is different than 20 years ago right yeah when absolutely. you were really focused on technology and you had to be the leading technologies so that that's not the role today much different yeah. role today my, my my takeaway is that how practical it is you know like you said in the back there's a plan like like it gives you a lot of ideas about things you can do. And, and, and to me, it's just reinforced the fact that 
we stress planning a lot, right, in our projects, like a lot of big projects fall under IT, sometimes transformative projects, and we have a plan. And every we'd all think we're crazy, right, to, to drive one of these transformative projects without a plan, a project plan. But that's how we lead, right? A lot of people lead without any sort of, you know, plan. And so it's really practical. I, I found other uses for it, you know, just than the 90 days, but but it, it's good. It's It's super practical. And you should have a plan. It should be written out and you can check box it or, you know, you know, put some sort of indicator on it, like how how much it's done or still needs to be done. Um, so that to me was like something that I think everyone will really get a lot out of uh, from the book. So I'm a, I'm a big, big, heavy planning person. Yeah. Uh, I have a plan for a plan a lot of the times, yeah. right? But, <laughs> uh, but, but I, I focus a lot on list. You know, I like to think about, I get into the office really early much earlier than anybody else because I need to think of my day and plan my day. Yeah. Uh, because once people start show, show up and we start to have our meetings, which take all day long, I'm not in control anymore. Right. It's that schedule is the people that yeah. are going to walk into my office. So that's why I'm there real early to plan my day and how I'm going to execute everything I'm going to do that day. So it's not, and, and that's just the day. But again, I go out to a week, the month and, and, and go on to that. Uh, I recommend to a lot of people that come to me and say, so what is it that you do that that's different than a lot of other people? What I do is that I have a five-year plan for what I'm going to do. No matter where I've been in the last 30, 40 years, right? I always have a five-year plan. And I have caveats, right? If things happen that are not yeah. expected, I update my plan. So there's some flexibility there. But there's a plan. And on January 1st, and I'm not a big drinker, so I don't have a big night on the 31st. But on January 1st, I review that plan and make any changes that I need to make to it. Yeah. So it's a plan that I set and it's a plan that I continue to update as we go through the year. And definitely on January 1st, I take the time to go through it. And it's everything from family thing to financial things to job related things. But it's the plan that I have for myself for the next five years. Yeah, I love it. it you know, we're, we're kindred spirits in that way. I'm a big believer in planning and for all aspects of life as well. Where where do you think that came from for you, for you? Like, how did that develop? Did someone teach you that or did something you just picked up through life? I, I think it's something that I just picked up through life yeah. because I like to be organized, right? Um, I like to do things because I thought about how I'm gonna do them. The last thing that I wanna do is react because my feeling is that whenever I react, I either do or say something that I'm not happy with later on. Yeah. Right? So I avoid reacting at all costs. And the opposite of react, right, is planning. So yeah. that, I think that that's where it comes from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've thought about that for myself as well. It's like, wow, where did I come up with these concepts? And I think it was a lot of little things along the way um, that helped me become that way. And yeah, I achieved, I, I, I would say a large part of my success is related to the ability to be organized and have a plan. So it sort of kept me focused, uh, but believe me, it doesn't, it's not a hundred percent for me. Like I'm all over the place still sometimes, but by and large, you know, I'm, I'm on a straight and narrow path, you know, to where I want to go in all aspects of my life. So, to, you know, a lot of times, and I know you've gotten this question before, what was the process like writing a book? Oh, it took me a year to write the book. And uh, it's not an easy process, as you know, yeah. because you've done it. Uh, it's going over and over, writing a chapter, going over and over it and changing this and changing that. Uh, the other thing that I did that I think was very helpful was that I had uh, five outside readers that I selected, friends yeah. and colleagues. So whenever I wrote a chapter, a certain version, I would send it to the readers and I would get from them their input and their feedback because I wanted to make sure that it was coming across the way that I meant to have it come across. So I have financial people, I have medical people, I have high level business people that were looking at this and, and giving me ideas and suggestions. So, so having that team in a sense of friends that were helping me do this was really, really helpful and key to the process. Uh, but it was just, a, you just have to stay out, you know, you gotta grind this out. Oh, yeah. And it's a, it's a daily process that you have to go through and, and remember what's, what the end goal is. Don't, don't let it, you know, stay focused on that end goal because you can get so easily distracted as you go through this process because it's, it's tedious, right? Yeah. Uh, you're sitting in your office writing this and rewriting this and doing the 10th version of something, right? Uh, but, but that's what it takes. 
Yeah. No, I, yeah, I could definitely relate. What about the next book? What's, what's next? Are you thinking maybe you might want to write another one? Oh, uh, you know, it, it, it was a great thing to do. And I think at some point I will uh, probably do a, a different book. Uh, but I haven't really thought that far. And I'm just kind yeah. of, uh, I, I'm so much into the, this role at Lehigh Valley that uh, is difficult to think that way. But I know that I want to do it, right? It's just a matter of what is it going to be and when is it going to be? Yeah, for sure. Well, I look forward to seeing it. Now, where can listeners purchase your book? Because I'm certain after everyone's heard this, they're going to want to go out and buy the book. So where it's, a, it's on Amazon and it's uh, lots of different versions. You have the hardcover one. You have a soft cover one. You have an ebook. You have an audio book. And by the way, I recorded my own audio book. Oh, nice. I didn't, I didn't want to hire anybody to do that. So so you have all the different versions on Amazon. I think the other thing for the audience to to realize is that all proceeds from this book go to charity. Uh, I was so fortunate to have been uh, what's called a Better Chance student. That's that organization that I mentioned that took me out of the South yeah. Bronx and brought me to Connecticut. It's still in existence. It's still doing great. So the plan is that any funds that I receive from this will be going to them so that they can continue to get kids, uh, give kids a chance from the inner cities. Yeah, that's very cool. You're, you're a good, Luis, you're, you're a great leader and a great person. So I really appreciate knowing you and appreciate what you've done. Is there something that we missed or something we did talk about that you just wanted to double down on? I'll give you the kind of the last word before we sign off. I think, uh, just having that discipline, that personal discipline to do the things that you know need to be done and to focus on doing them right. We're not going to be perfect, and I'm certainly no, nowhere close to perfect, but I work very hard to do it better and better every time I engage in something. So it's continuous improvement that I'm looking at. It's certainly not trying to be perfect because I know that's, that's not something that I can achieve. So, so if I have a message for folks out there is continue to improve. Focus on what you can do better on a daily basis because that is going to help you no matter what you do, no matter what your role is. That's a personal trait that really will carry you forward a long way. Yeah. Well, I had, I had two comments in closing. One is I, yeah, I got to get the audiobook version now because I love your accent. I don't know if it came from, if it's a mix of <laughs> DR in the Bronx or I, what it is. I think it is. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And, it's a uh, South Bronx Hispanic uh, accent. <laughs> yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, and then, yeah, I, I hear another book in you. I just want to end with that. You, you, you're you a great leader, as I mentioned, great person. You have so much to share with others. And uh, a book is a great way of, of sharing and obviously participating with me on Ed Talk. So thank you so much for spending time with me and my audience. Thank you for your friendship over this many years and, uh, and looking forward to working with you in the future. Yeah. All right, that... Wraps up Ed Talks. Thanks for joining us.